Sorry, just a question. So potentially the proposal would allow, for example, um, Bungie operation as one example of the business to be advertising on these signs, which would be placed on council reserves. But you would be controlling the revenue would go to your company. Very good. Um, just points of clarification. So there is a group, the site would propose a charge for the site, which will be done through the yeah, register of evaluation again. Uh, so it won't be. So sign on will have to pay a fee to council to use that site, it's like every other um, license to occupy that we have around town. And then there's also the, um, the other way of actually doing that is actually selling the town on the screen, which is the um, Great Lake Tapo um, movie um, showing the lake, the mountains, the, that um, all of what you see on the TV. Just to follow on from that, the principle I have no problem with, but it's great if I'm supposed to put it, it's just <coughs> money into this itself in business. I think it's a great idea in terms of public events, you know, community events, that sort of thing, and various entities promote those. I think there's a real grey line there when you start to cross into private businesses being advertised on display screens on council reserves. I mean, yes, we would get a license fee. I'm aware of what the license fee may be, and I would think it's significant revenue from those private businesses in doing that. So I think that's a different kettle of fish to me. So, for example, having contract a cycle challenge to put these screens up to make the event, etc., etc., that sort of thing. So there's just a little bit of grey area there. But, you know, I, I, I think what you've done, that you've taken this far, is great. It's important to the degree. My only concerns are, is again, you know, I think I'm the only one, oh, sorry, Barry, and Gary, um, you know, just with us buying the screens the last time for the Rugby World Cup, and, and what you're suggesting you're using your, yours for, Devon, was what we suggested to use ours for for events and promoting tourism and, and stuff like that. And that's the only thing that I, I, I'm, I'm stuck with this, um, John, is that, you know, we haven't, we don't know where we're at with those screens or, or what's happening. That's the only thing, and I appreciate that you know you've gone ahead and, and, and these are a better quality screen and stuff like that. That's all I'm fine, but I just want to know what's what's happening with our screens. Can I get yeah, a suggestion on the screens? Um, like you said, technology. Um, they were purchased what two and a half three years ago. Um, within two and a half three years ago, so like when you bought the stereo, you know, from what you get back then and what you get now is a, is a huge difference. Um, yeah. My screens in the <coughs> probably in the Tip, but um, if you actually put the two up and you see the, uh, the, the quality difference, but they, they do have a viewing distance and they do have a lifetime expectancy on them as well. And then the other thing too is actually breaking them down and putting them together all the time. So well, I'm quite happy to go with that. You know, the first suggestion that um, Councillor Mins has moved for, but as long as I've got a you know pretty warm um, assurance from our council staff, and I know that you will then get well that our screens aren't viable anymore, that they're paid off and, and that um, they're not going to be used for that. Yeah. Or actually utilising them in, in one particular place, like out at the Owen Delaney Park, actually parking them up and actually permanently fixing them and actually using them what they were supposed to be used for. So, um, or down on the Great Lake Centre, um, you know, actually permanently fix them because that's the best way you can eat the um, best life out of them, rather than breaking them down all the time. So. Councillor Minster? Yeah, just to be honest, being in commercial reality, I'm with Rob. You know the pressure for M21 and McDonald's to advertise is going to be pretty intense, and 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 we've got no budget for so no <laughs> Yeah. So to be honest, to be honest, you know, um, <coughs> commercial reality is I would make, I'd want to have leeway in there that you could accept advertising like that because they're still promoting town in some sort. But I just it's my question for staff again with Gareth and John is as long as we've got content boundaries that could be in place, like it might be 10 percenters. Um, free advertising for council events or whatever, but I think uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm all for starting a process, but a strong yeah. boundary around, but allowing you to accept commercial advertising to make it viable. I'd look, I wouldn't want to see the screen for <coughs> six months and commercially it falls over. Yeah. So, so John, we'll let come back in a resource consent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But what I was going to suggest is it came up this night and maybe up to Christmas when we've when we've had some time to discuss the reality of this now uh, because it's been a bit of a you know, not a pipe dream, but it's certainly uh, just upon the table at the moment. So maybe we'll come back in, in after the new, uh, new year with some proposals around content. Uh, yes. So then you can sign that on. And quite it's, it's for a good living example is, is uh, the promoter of the entire concert. That's just a commercial event. So what's the difference in that between Mike and advertising? Yeah, no, we get, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Lex, I'll just move on. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Henderson, I'm just, 
question to uh, Mr. Rudd. The resource consent would be publicly notified. Don't know until we get an application, but my background would be Okay, um, we've got to move for the first part of this. Oh, yep, we'll hear as well. Sorry, we'll drag you out. Do you want to just give us an update on our, our screen? So, I mean, yep, sure. So, um, uh, two years through our three, at least we've got one year to run. And uh, are they what, paid off? or? Uh, no, they're not paid off yet. They come straight on exactly the time at the moment. So, will they by the end of the three years? Uh, they're probably not too far off yet. Yeah. And what's the, what's the, um, the length of life of them? Um, it depends on the average, so I think it's up in the thousand hours, which is a uh, number of years. Um, we'll make a call in that time, which is what we're actually suitable to do. So how many hours have they done over the two years? I couldn't tell you, but if you, if you actually track out the 100,000 hours. Well, I think there's a bit of process with the resource consent, so if we get through this first part, which is the CS resolution that proposal is supported in the whole and location of Ender Pro, which is on the map in Index 1, and that is worship. Uh, worship near and the chief that's involved will be authorised to sign the licence to occupy the said locations. And then part two, that uh, uh, the resource consent comes back before council or no? Uh, so it runs its own process? I think it's something that we've got to do. Exactly. We've got to do that council before, so it's a little bit of principle, so that's true.